today the time has come for us to use the inspiration of our pioneers to unleash the tremendous potential that resides in our people. We need to nurture our youth and awaken their natural genius. And we need to engender a culture of scientific rebirth, innovation, and the application of new and appropriate technology. An action-oriented message to kickstart Science and Technology Month. What's on the agenda? Stay tuned for the details. I'm your host, Arroyo Eubanks, and you're inside Jamaica Magazine. Today's program will also showcase one of our very own innovators' idea of an automated greenhouse via your smartphone. It all starts right now. Hey. Hey you, me. Yes you. Are you between the ages of 9 to 12, attending a primary or a prep school? Do you want to go on a treasure hunt? No, no, no. You don't need to go that far. Our island home has a lot of hidden treasures. And this is your opportunity to explore. The Jamaica Information Service Heritage Essay Competition is here again for its fourth staging. Your challenge is to type a 400 to 500 word essay on which national heritage site is most significant and why. So gear up, boot up that computer and start trekking. You need to download your passport, the application form online at www.jis.gov.jm. For more information on what you need to complete your exploration, call 926-359024, extension 2137 or 2133. You can continue your journey until Friday, November 7. That's right, the deadline has been extended. The typed essay should be submitted online via the entry form on the JIS website at jis.gov.jm. Treasures and bounty await you, courtesy of our sponsors, FDR Resort, Lime, Jamaica National, Sangsters Bookstore, WB Trophies, Royal Computers and Accessories, and Singer. Remember, November 7 is the new deadline. Submit your entries now! The Jamaica Information Service Heritage Essay Competition 2014. Good day, I'm Andrea Chisholm and this is your JIS News for Thursday, November 6. A team from the International Monetary Fund IMF is on the island to conduct the sixth review of Jamaica's performance under the extended fund facility. The IMF mission, led by Yankee Martin, is scheduled to be in the island until November 14. During this period, the IMF will determine if Jamaica met all quantitative targets and structural benchmarks for the 2014 July to September quarter. Finance Minister Dr. Peter Phillips has said that based on the government's assessment, all the criteria were met. After passing the fifth IMF test in September, Jamaica received 68.8 million US dollars more from the multilateral agency, bringing total disbursements under the arrangement to 483.2 million US dollars. Over 3,000 residents in St. Elizabeth who use the burnt Savannah Knoxwood water supply system are in high spirits after the system was recently upgraded. With the new water system, we appreciate it very much and it's done a lot to us because plenty of us wasn't getting the water rightly and now that we are getting it good now, so we are very thankful for it. The system was upgraded at a cost of $59.6 million. It was executed by the National Water Commission through contractors Bacchus Engineering and Shere Khan Construction with supervision by the Rural Water Supply Limited. 
Phase 2 of cleanup activities in Portmore St. Catherine geared at reducing the spread of the chikungunya virus will begin this Saturday. The work, which will continue into Sunday, November 9, is part of government's National Health Emergency Vector Control Cleanup Campaign. 27 major communities in the municipality will be targeted over the two days. The Portmore Municipal Council is spearheading the works, which will include drain clearing, the cleaning of open lots, bushing and fogging. Meanwhile, Acting Permanent Secretary in the Health Ministry, Dr. Kevin Harvey, is addressing persistent doubt among some citizens who are not convinced that chick V is spread by the bite of an Aedes aegypti mosquito. Chikungunya is definitely not spread uh, through the air because the part of the developmental cycle for the virus takes place within the mosquito and hence it must pass through the mosquito to go from one individual to the next. He explains that when a mosquito becomes infected, the virus goes to its saliva gland and this contaminated saliva is released during biting. The mosquito injects saliva into your bloodstream to prevent it from clotting in order to take its blood meal and that's when it passes the virus to an, an individual and cause an infection. Dr. Harvey was speaking recently on a special televised panel discussion on the government's response to the outbreak of the chikungunya virus. The program was an initiative of the Ministry of Information and the Office of the Prime Minister. Jamaican students have dominated the regional ranking in the Caribbean Secondary Education Certificate CSEC June 2014 exams. Local students captured 161 top 10 positions in 30 subjects, followed by Trinidad and Tobago with 109 positions. The Ministry of Education has congratulated the students, pointing out that the regional ranking shows Jamaican students leading in mathematics, Caribbean history, religious education and information technology, among other subjects. Jamaican students and Niall Anderson of Manning School won the CXC Regional Award for the most outstanding candidate in the sciences. Meanwhile, Romario White of Campion College won the Regional Natural Science Award for CAPE, while Giselle Dixon of Wilmers Girls School was selected for the Regional Humanities Award. National Security Minister Peter Bunting says the police are pursuing leads in the killing of Horace Phillips, a consultant with the Jamaica Tourist Board. Mr. Phillips's body was found in a house in Marley Mountain, St. Catherine on Tuesday. Minister Bunting has condemned the killing and says the criminals who carried out the act must not go unpunished. He is urging law-abiding citizens to tell the police what they know so the perpetrators can be brought to justice. And finally, the by-election to elect a new Member of Parliament for Central Westmoreland will be held on Monday, December 1. Nomination Day will be on Wednesday, November 12. Prime Minister Portia Simpson-Miller yesterday advised Governor-General Sir Patrick Allen to issue the necessary proclamation and notification in accordance with the Representation of the People's Act. The seat became vacant when Roger Clark died in August. And that's it for GIS News Today. Amanda Chisholm, thank you for watching. Innovative Jamaicans between ages 12 to 25, submit your entries for the Climate Change Logo Competition, an initiative of the Ministry of Water, Land, Environment and Climate Change. Your work could be the new brand for the Ministry's Climate Change Division. I challenge all the entrants to become change champions, change champions in response to climate change. The competition will run until November 14, so start creating your logo now. For further information, contact the Ministry of Water, Land, Environment and Climate Change at 9261590 or visit their website at www.mwlecc.com. One of the main features of Science and Technology Month is the Gala Banquet on November 12. There, the Prime Minister will present a national medal to an individual who has contributed to the development of science and technology in Jamaica. And there are plans to recognize other innovators in other ways. Science and Technology Minister Philip Paulwell and his team disclosed these and other details at a recent JIS think tank. Here's what was revealed. We will also be acknowledging those innovators in our country. There are 10 categories and an overall winner. And we are very, very pleased that to date we have received just under 100 entries. At the end of November, 
I am expecting that the country will begin to celebrate many of our achievements. We would have uh, given uh, public attention to those innovators who have been behind the scenes working to improve the value of the goods and services that they wish to offer. A major event for the month is the third biennial conference on science and technology with this year. Um, the, the theme is green gold, medicinal ganja, and other natural products, potential source of wealth um, for, for Jamaica. The conference is November 10 to 12, and um, Wednesday the 12th. We have some 24 um, presenters, local and from overseas. There's a lot of overseas interest in this conference. Other major event is that on the 28th of November, we'll have a science in the park. This is the second time that we are um, staging this, is in the Emancipation Park, where we'll bring um, scientific displays, business displays supporting science and technology. We expect to have some 30 booths and it will be a, a forum for information for businesses, for students, and for the general housewife. We want the people of the country to understand that when we say science, it is not necessarily the man in the white coat in a laboratory, but the science speaks to the knowledge base that the people have what you may call the cultural science as opposed to the discovery science in the, in the laboratory. And that cultural science is what we really want to bring to the people, that they are living it daily. And there is so much information there that we're saying to them, time come to look at this kind of information that you have and tell us, look at it and see how you can use that to create opportunities for yourself, your family, your community, the society at large, and to use that, which can now generate work, jobs, uh, and eventually lead to wealth creation. The fact that we in Jamaica have over 80 of the 160 medicinal plants known across the world and accepted as having a potential to assist in healthcare. 80 of them are grown right here. And the whole in indigenous uh, use and knowledge and beliefs and practices, there's a tremendous opportunity here to build on that in creating an awareness, in creating an employment and a thrust that the people can use. Uh, in, 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 in wealth creation. So one of the big things that we want then to, to take forward is the use of this indigenous knowledge. We want also to look at how best we can bring together our research institutions. And of course, the other thing that we need to bring to the table is the importance of support. Because we, we speak and we look at the opportunities, but nonetheless, we must have some kind of of, of, of support to kick off these. I believe that this thrust going forward is going to be far more meaningful, far more action oriented, and uh, um, especially in relation to the nutraceuticals, um, energy, ICTs, those are going to be our focus going forward. So we want to really push that aspect of the training and the development of our people to be able to participate in this tremendous uh, development that we see on the horizon. How do we get our students to refrain from thinking that science is hard and that the STEM subjects are the ones that is going to be our bread and butter going forward? Why we might have to de-emphasize um, some of the other occupations and focus now on those that we can provide jobs for people. You know, the whole 
hype right now of the logistics-centered economy is on the way. And the individuals who are going to participate in the development of that, participate in the infrastructure and in the, the setting the whole stage. We want to see a certain competence, even at the basic levels, okay, where they will now be able to contribute. We are expecting that by, that by the end of November, the country will accept that we are seriously pursuing this mandate of getting our people to fully embrace science, technology, innovation as a way of life going forward. Chikungunya is a viral infection transmitted when an Aedes aegypti mosquito bites an infected person and then bites someone else. Symptoms include high fever, headache, joint pain, muscle pain, and rash. If you suspect that you've been infected, take paracetamol, such as Panadol, Cetamol, and Tylenol. Infants, children under five years old, pregnant women, the elderly, persons with sickle cell, and chronic illnesses such as diabetes and cardiovascular disease are at risk for more severe symptoms and must see a doctor for proper evaluation and monitoring. Fortunately, most cases of Chick V are mild, but if your symptoms worsen, you need to see a doctor. For more info, call 1-888-1-LOVE from 8.30 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. That number again, 1-888-663-5683. We must break out of the same old, same old syndrome. We must become risk takers, and we must develop an appetite for challenge and opportunity. That's exactly what drove you and Peter to build a prototype of a greenhouse that allows you to water the crops, monitor the temperature, and even the nutrient level of the water solution. His application won him first place in the open category of the Minister's Innovation Award in 2012. A very impressive display, which we will let him tell you about. Technology has afforded us the opportunity of being in control without having direct physical contact with objects or certain mechanics, thus creating an ease and relaxed way of doing things. Now, this remote operating technology has been added to farming at the local level. In a technology-driven world, persons are finding more innovative ways to improve and simplify how we do things, as well as creating added benefits and increased profits for businesses. Such was the intention of engineering student at the University of the West Indies, Ewan Pitter, when he designed and created this fully automated hydroponic greenhouse system. Renewable energy driven, the system is programmed to be operated by the use of a smartphone or the internet, facilitating a more efficient and effective approach to farming. You don't have to be at the plants every day, right? At the greenhouse every day, because you have access to all the information that you, actually, that you normally would go there to check for. Information such as the nutrient levels, water, temperature and humidity, which in a typical greenhouse setting would require manual observation and control. But Pitta's automated system controls all that activity, allowing farmers to maintain quality crops from just about anywhere in the world. We control the nutrient concentration, such as uh, your, N your, N your nitrate, the phosphate and your potash, as well as pH and dissolved oxygen. We have a set limit that those parameters are supposed to be at. So once it exceeds those parameters that we set, you will automatically update, updated by your cell phone to let you know that um, something is wrong in your greenhouse or a nutrient is up. We can actually monitor this system remotely via cell phone or over the internet. The intelligent controlling is performed by what's called a programmable logic controller, PLC, that's microcontroller based. The PLC is used to activate the input and output processes of the greenhouse hydroponic system. 
Head of UA's Engineering Department and UN Supervisor Dr. Paul Aking explains. Everything that feeds the nutrients and the sensors and the valves and everything that requires some on-off or some amount of control, all of that is computerized and it goes into the computer and it stores as special signals and the commands are stored as special signals. What we do now, we send those signals via the internet, via the SMS, via your something like your texting and then we can use, we can see what it is and we can send both ways, it's bi-directional. The application won first place for the open category in the 2013 Minister's Innovation Award developed by the Science and Technology Ministry. It's an ICT control, meaning that the, the internet protocol logging, monitoring and control system of an agricultural process that everyone knows about. No one was aware that you could control these things so remotely and it really blew the judges away. Judges were also impressed by the system's ability to efficiently produce its own supply of energy while providing a sustainable means for food security and food production. This project is about growing plants in a solution environment. It's about controlling such growth and ensuring that you can do that control remotely or you control and monitor remotely. Greenhouse farming is known for generating very high crop yield and high quality produce when compared to open air farming. Interests have already been pouring in from both the private and public sector, including the Ministry of Agriculture, about the microcontroller based automated hydroponic greenhouse system. And the team intends to make this a true demonstration that the technology works. The next stage is we're going to go to a functional, fully demonstrable functional prototype that anyone in the country can come and look at. You'll see the physical plants growing. You'll get a measure of the, the yield of the plants. We want to take it as far as it can go. So we want to demonstrate that the technology works. Ultimately, this automated system is intended to replace the hydroponic technology being used today and make some farming methods less labor intensive. We want to engage in projects that are useful, that are nation building, that are solving problems in the nation not just some on-the-shelf stuff. So hydroponic and sustainable agriculture is a useful and we add the electronics and the engineering to it, modernize it, and here we have a product. This level of commitment to nation building justifies the government's unending drive to promote technology as a vehicle to propel new businesses and to improve existing ones. We have opportunities and it is these areas that we have identified that we have advantages that we need to exploit and we are going to do it. The Ebola virus is transmitted through direct contact with an infected person's blood or other bodily fluids such as saliva, urine, stool and semen. The virus can also be spread if broken skin comes in contact with contaminated items like clothing, bed linen and needles used by an Ebola patient. Symptoms of Ebola include sudden onset of fever, intense weakness, muscle pain, headache and sore throat. This may be followed by vomiting, diarrhea and rash, impaired kidney and liver functions, and in some cases, both internal and external bleeding leading to death. Ebola cannot be spread by someone who does not have symptoms. The time between exposure and when a person begins to have symptoms is known as the incubation period. For Ebola, this is anywhere from 2 to 21 days. Infected patients should be handled by persons wearing proper personal protective equipment, then transfer to designated isolation centers. Protect yourself. Avoid travel to Ebola-affected countries. Avoid contact with infected persons. Don't touch the body of someone who has died from Ebola. Wash hands frequently and use an alcohol-based sanitizer. To know more, call the Health Ministry's Emergency Operations Center at 1-888-1-LOVE. That's 1-888-663-5683.
1935 in the parish of St. Mary, Syringa Marshall Burnett grew beyond the ordinary to live a distinguished life in service to nation building. Her decades of contribution to development as an healthcare professional, educator, parliamentarian and social activist has blazed a trail of goodwill, not just in Jamaica, but across the world. I witnessed at that time her dedication and love for country, as well as our desire to see better health care and indeed a better quality of life for all Jamaicans. Syringa Marshall Burnett's passion for healthcare began with a desire to go into nursing. As a teen, she was accepted into a training program at the Kingston Public Hospital. That sparked a career and a lifetime of learning that included midwife training at KPH, a Bachelor of Nursing degree from the University of Toronto, and a Master's degree in Adult Mental Health and Nursing Education from New York University. Upon her return home and from her various positions at the University of the West Indies, she would marshal her training and experience to help develop Jamaica's healthcare profile. Among other things, successfully advocating for a nursing degree program at the University of the West Indies and later a master's program at the UWI's School of Nursing. Head of the Department of Advanced Nursing Education, she successfully defended the retention of the department's status in the restructuring of the faculty in order to increase the number of young persons entering the nursing profession. Syringa Marshall Burnett was also integral to the establishment of an examination and licensing system for nurses in 1993. She served five times as president of the Nurses Association of Jamaica, was a member of the World Health Organization Expert Committee on Nursing, and served on the advisory boards of the American Journal of Nursing and the Journal of Advanced Nursing. In 1992, Syringa Marshall Burnett started another chapter of public service when she was appointed a seat in the Senate. Three years later, in 1995, she became the second woman to serve as president of the Jamaican Senate, a position she held and served with distinction until 2007. As a senator and later president of the Senate, she raised the bar of political decorum, parliamentary and political decorum, by the fine example she set, Mr. Speaker. Her parliamentary contributions were profound and her leadership fair and respected. She also served as a justice of the peace. Syringa Marshall Burnett's contributions in life did not go unnoticed. In 1990, she was awarded the Order of Distinction Commander Class. An academic center at the University of the West Indies was named in her honor. It's called the Syringa Marshall Burnett World Health Collaborating Center for Nursing and Midwifery Education. And until the time of her passing on October 3, 2014, Syringa Marshall Burnett was chair of the National Council for Senior Citizens. She is survived by her husband and daughter. I hope you enjoyed our show today. Let us know what you thought of it by sending a comment to Jamaica Magazine at jis.gov.jm or via tweet at JIS News. Our website, jis.gov.jm, has more information you may want to check out, so log on today. Until tomorrow, when we do it all over again, same time, same station, I'm Aroya Eubanks. This has been a production of the Jamaica Information Service, the voice of Jamaica.